Hey everyone, welcome back to Embedded Design. I'm here again with the Samsung Chromebook 2, and today's episode is going to focus on uh, bootstrapping with NVU Boot um, and getting a custom kernel and root file system loaded. So, before I begin, all the steps to reproduce what I've done here will be listed in the description. So, if you want to try this uh, on your Chromebook, feel free. Um, and if you have any issues, please comment, and I'll try to try to help you out as best as I can. So, let's first start talking about uh, NVU with a little. Um, what I've done is I'm using the NVU boot provided in the firmware tarball that, uh, that Google has given out. Um, why have I done this? Uh, U-boot is not currently building in the Chromium tree due to the fact that it depends on repositories which are private. Now, I've heard rumors Google is trying to make these repositories public, so I, I would imagine uh, very shortly here we'll be able to build custom versions of NVU boot. Why would you want to do that? Well. Save environment doesn't work, so you have to manually configure the boot arguments um, in U-Boot right now, which is kind of a pain. Two, you might want to boot the kernel in hypervisor mode. Well, you're going to have to patch the U-Boot source to do that, so uh, that will be enabled once we get the source building. So let's talk a little bit more about the kernel. Now, the kernel that I'm going to use in this demo is the 3811 Chromium kernel, uh, built from source, um, but it's essentially the same kernel that's running right now in Chromium. Why have I done this? Well, it the display works with this kernel. Um, there are There is support for the Peach Pi, which is the 13.3 inch version, and the Peach Pit, which is the 11.6 version, in Linux Next. However, the patches necessary to enable the display, at least for the Peach Pi, I haven't tried with the Peach Pit, um, still need a little bit of work, and I have been unsuccessful getting um, them to work properly. So, unless you've modified your Chromebook 2 to expose the serial port, which I will link pictures in the description if you're really brave and you want to do that. Um, if you don't have a serial port, the main, booting a mainline kernel on here um, really is going to be useless because you can't, uh, you can't see anything. I suppose you could probably configure a network interface uh, and then you know configure your root file system to start OpenSSH and then SSH in if you really wanted to do it, but that wasn't something that, that was all that useful to me. So, uh, let's get started. What have I done with this Chromebook? I put it into developer mode and I've set two flags um, to allow the first stage bootloader to um, boot off external media, which is the SD card that I've created, uh, and to boot uh, non-signed images. So uh, let's go Control-Alt forward, log in as root, and reboot. If you guys have had uh, NVU boot running on the previous generation Chromebook, the process is, is absolutely identical. So here we are, uh, the OS verification screen. We're going to type Control-U and we're going to boot NVU boot off the SD card. So here's NVU boot running on the Chromebook 2. Uh, you can see we've got frame buffer support so we can actually uh, interact with it uh, without a serial console which is really nice. Now uh, let's we have to manually configure each kernel boot so let's do that now. So we're going to set m boot file u image. So we're telling it you, the bootloader which, uh, which kernel image by name we want to boot with. Um, and then we want to load the kernel image off of the SD card. So we're going to do ext2 load mmc 1 colon 3. So the eMMC flash chip is device 0. The SD card interface is 1. So we're going to load from the mmc interface uh, device 1 partition 3. And then we're going to just use the, the load address that's already pre-configured um, by this U-boot. So there we go, we've read the kernel into memory now. Now we want to set the boot args. So we're going to set env boot args console equals tty1 root equals dev mmc blk p1 p3. Excuse me, block 1 p3. Read write. And we're going to set boot m, give it the load address variable. and we've launched the kernel. Now you can see the display works here with this kernel, and we can actually see all the console messages, which is really nice. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yep, looks like you can. So we're booting Debian right now, and I can log in as root. And here we are. Now the cool thing is, with the Chromium kernel, um, I can you know, have uh, Wi-Fi working, I can have um, you know, the stability, the USB stack stability that comes with that kernel. On the mainline kernel, you might not get that. It's, it's hit or miss, um, but it, it's up to you. So just a quick demo to show that this is possible, and I'd really like to see from you guys, you know, what you're using this for. Um, uh, if you get it up and running, just let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. 